your CIG TV News Update. I'm Donna Bush. Glad you could join us. As we've been reporting, a delegation made up of government officials, Department of Agricultural staff, and local farmers attended the 67th annual Denby Agricultural Industrial and Food Show held in Jamaica recently. While there, farmers visited some farmers in Jamaica to gain more knowledge of the industry. A contingent of um, Cayman farmers went to the Denby Agriculture Show, which is, I think, considered the premier agriculture show in the, in the region. And uh, so they were able to have sort of first-hand um, access to it and uh, gain first-hand knowledge of, of what's available. They do it on a regular basis. The, the president of the Agricultural Society was, was actually there as, as well. And the show started on Sunday. So before I, uh, I arrived, they had done some tours of, of some of the hydroponic farms and, and various other um, sort of technology-based um, farms in Jamaica to, again, see what's possible. And uh, I think where there is real scope is, is for us to, to access more technical advice and, um, and the science of farming that is available in a place like Jamaica that has such a, an entrenched and, and long-standing you know, uh, culture of, of commercial agriculture. Also making our headlines today, the six young women competing for the Miss Cayman Islands Universe title made their way across Grand Cayman on Saturday. The annual contestant motorcade gives the contestants the chance to be seen and greeted by locals and visitors alike. Well, we kicked off our pageant season with the orientation, and so it's been pretty hectic since the orientation. Obviously, we have the girls in some really intense and extensive training. Uh, they're trained in public speaking, etiquette, hair, makeup, runway training, and, uh, and they, you know, it's been an amazing experience for them and, and also very rewarding for the committee. Our, um, I think our goal as a committee is to create a platform for these girls to empower themselves to become role models and that's exactly what we see by, um, you know, pageant night once they grace the stage. They're absolutely amazing and we feel so satisfied with, with, the, with the hard work. It's a lot of work, but we're very, very satisfied with it. It's a week off from, from the pageant, so it just gets everybody involved and, and everybody just gets really excited along with the, the contestants. Um, so it's just basically, I guess, to, you know, just, to, just to build the spirit of the pageant and, and the community spirit in general. Now, the purpose of the traditional all-island motorcade is to allow the contestants a chance to drive into their districts and to give their supporters the opportunity to show up take photos and cheer on their contestant. The new Miss Cayman Islands uh, Universe pageant takes place this Saturday, August 17th at the Ritz-Carlton. Gates open at 6 o'clock. Showtime is 7 p.m. Well, last weekend, residents and visitors on Grand Cayman enjoyed music and food at the first Saturday Night Live event held in downtown Georgetown. The idea of the Georgetown Revitalization Initiative is to create a modern downtown waterfront atmosphere that was filled with live music by local entertainers, local artisans, and tapas-style Caymanian food. The overall goal is to draw more people during the evenings to downtown Georgetown. Now, everyone who went out appeared to enjoy the evening of celebration on the beautiful harbor front. The next big event on the calendar to take place is the Street Food Festival. That's scheduled to take place on September 21st. Well, if you'd like to know more about what's on CIG television on the schedule, you can go online to gis.gov.ky. Be sure to click on the publications icon at the bottom of the page. If you missed today's news update, you can go to the Cayman Islands government Facebook page, as well as the CIG television YouTube channel. I'm Donna Bush, thanking you for joining us, wishing you a safe and, of course, a very wonderful evening and hoping you'll join us back here again tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye for now. I'm Jody Ann Powery, I'm the Police Media Officer with the RCIPS and I'm here to give you some crime prevention tips on how to best protect your property. The first thing that we want to discuss is our points of entries. Um, let's start with the front door and then we'll move on to the windows and the back doors or sliding glass doors. The first thing to consider is the front door. This particular front door has two deadbolt locks. One of these deadbolt locks are properly carpentered and the other is not. When your door is properly locked, you'll hear a click at the end and 
the dead bolts are not able to move. If it is slightly opened, then you can push the dead bolt back without having any restrictions. I'll now proceed to show you what your lock should look like when it is properly locked. When it comes to your windows, you want to make sure that your window is locked all the way down because even though the lock is on, if it's not all the way down, it can still be pried. The proper way to lock the window is to make sure that the window goes all the way down to the seal and then you pull across the lock. When you have a sliding glass door at home, you want to make sure that you have secondary locking devices in addition to the lock that comes with the door. One of those can be a simple piece of wood that's jamming the doorway. We want to encourage you to ensure that you don't make things easy for burglars who are looking for opportunities to break into property by leaving your property out in plain view. Some of these items are your car keys, your electronics and your handbags. Make sure that you put these properties away when you're leaving the house or when you're going to bed. When you're going camping or if you're taking your family on a trip, you want to ensure that your property has some sign of life. This can be done by leaving a light on or putting timers on your lights. And we want to ensure that our family homes are safe. In order to do so, we encourage that people take the proper precautions by starting up neighborhood watches or encouraging family members or persons they trust to check on their properties while they're away. Boating, fishing, and water sports in the Cayman Islands are great, but keep a cool head. Here are seven tips for fun and safe sea outings. Number one, use a checklist to plan your outing. Check the weather forecast, make a float plan, and share it with someone who is remaining on land stating where you're going, with whom, and when you're expected to return. Visit your nearest marine supply store to get your safety gear. This includes signaling mirrors, whistles, and a flare kit. It's also very important to have onboard flotation devices and life vests for each person. There are different types of vests. Some are for water sport activities, such as snorkeling, and others are for going on offshore boating or on fishing trips. Number two, these items can be lifesavers in case of an accident or bad weather. Number three, use a motor kill switch, especially if you're boating alone. In case of a leak or breakdown, always stay with the boat until help arrives. If you capsize, an emergency beacon or locator device can send a distress signal to inform the authorities of your location. Larger flares will indicate distress to a boat, airplane, or search and rescue officials. Number four. In addition to sunscreen, food, and beverages, it would be smart to have a cell phone. Make sure your marine radio works. Cayman's boaters use channel 16 to communicate. Number five. Also, don't forget your anchor and sufficient rope. Number six. Boat operators should be familiar with the local waters and reefs, as well as the capabilities and functions of the vessels they are using. Always obey the rules of the sea and the marine environment and have courtesy for others. Number seven, alcohol and salt water do not mix, especially if you're the captain. Some useful contact numbers are 911. The RCIPS Marine Base is 649-7710 and the Port Authority is 949-2055. Smooth sailing, all. Did you know that planning permission is required for a shed? Did you know you should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required? 